It's important in trigonometry to be able to actually do the graph of sine theta and cos theta and tan theta. So I want to start off by just explaining that these, these functions, although we call them circular functions, I just want to show you why it is that, you know, with these circles, do we get these weird graphs? I mean, this is one way you can see sort of this thing here mapping along. You can see this right here uh, showing it. Um, we can even see through a Ferris wheel, which is, you know, one of those rides that you can take at an amusement park. I think I have a video actually that's... Uh, that I can show you here for this. So this one here is a video that someone did on YouTube, which is fantastic for me. So I just did trigonometry through Ferris wheel. And if you look at this one, someone just made a little animation. So this is the, we're graphing the height of a Ferris wheel every second. And so this right here on this axis over here, this is time. And on the Y axis, this is the height of the wheel. So if you look at this, see this little dot right here, that matches the height of this wheel. His program is just doing the uh, coordinates here. But try to ignore all the numbers here and just take a look at over time what's happening. Even though this thing goes around in a circle, you've got over time, this thing is going up and down and up and down. And so that's, that's a really nice example of a sine or cosine curve. Um, and we have lots of other things in the world that are sinusoid or things that repeat. Uh, we have, for example, in the Bay of Fundy, which is a place in Canada, uh, they have gigantic, ridiculous tides. Check it out. Look how much the tides change. I actually just want to go back to this. So just take a look at, at low tide. Look at these boats. And they're completely in the sand or dirt or whatever this is here. And look at this right here. This is the water. And so these ones right here, if you look at this, as the day progresses, look how high the water goes. That's amazing how much it rises each day. You can see that people are hopping on their boats and going for a little ride. And as we go, you can, of course, take a look and watch the tide go down again. I mean, isn't that amazing just how much it goes up and down? And so if you graphed the height of the tide versus time, it would also make one of these sine curves or cosine curves. I think that's just actually quite ridiculous. Look how much the tide changes. You know, it goes like from there to there, which is some meters. So we have lots of examples in uh, nature and in everyday life where we have things that are sinusoidal. We have Ferris wheels, tides, and even DJing. I'm going to do a, uh, a little video later on that actually shows you how I see uh, beat matching for DJing. So if you're actually trying to match one song on top of the other one and trying to play them at the same time, um, it helps to actually understand a little bit about graphs and sine and cosine, believe it or not. At least that's how I see it. So I'm going to show you that as well a little bit later. But for right now, let's start off with the graph of y equals sine of x. So it helps maybe to draw these axes. So this right here is going to be uh, the x-axis. This is the y-axis. So is this. And now whenever I do these drawings of sine or cos, I like to try to just draw myself the axes, then draw myself a curve, and after that, label what's what. I find if I label it first, then try to draw it, I find it's really tough to draw. And so let's just draw what sine x looks like. Sine x starts off at 0, 0. So at x equals 0, y is 0. Starts off here, it goes up, it goes back down, and it goes like this. This is what we call one period. Now, of course, it keeps going forever. That means it keeps going like this right here, and it keeps going like this right here. But I'm just showing you sort of one period of sine x. Remember what a period means. That is the distance in the x direction, in this case right here, uh, where you've done the entire cycle. And the way I like to think of it is, um, let's say you're using a computer program and you want to cut and paste something. If you copied this piece and then you pasted it afterwards, it would, it would give you the whole pattern. It would work. It would tell you what's happening here. Another way to see it is from a uh, peak to a peak. You could find that distance from this top to this top, but that would be the period. Or you can do a trough to a trough. Or you can even do here where it's sort of crossing but going up. And that means the next one is here where it crosses going up. Either way, you can do it. Now it helps to actually label what these values are. The important thing from y equals sine x, you have to know this, is that its period is 2 pi. It should make sense. We were talking about radians before, and going all the way around a circle is 2 pi radians. So that's 2 pi. Now in my own mind, this is all I have memorized. I have that the graph goes like this and goes to 2 pi. And I also know that it goes up to 1 and down to negative 1 in the y. Now cos by contrast, instead of starting off at x equals 0, y equals 0, it starts off up here. And this one just goes like this. And then of course it keeps going forever like this. And it keeps going forever like this. So both of them are sort of curvy like this. In fact, we call these sinusoidal for a reason. But the important thing is that cos starts off at x equals 0, it's at 1. So that's the important thing right here. 
and over here it's at minus 1. And don't forget uh, this value right here, this is 2 pi, because that is one full period. See, from a peak to a peak. Now it helps to actually draw the other points as well, because it's sort of, there's five points we can use to draw uh, one of these curves. There's one, two, three, four, five. With those five points, we know what's going on, because we have to know the peak, the middle, the bottom, and the middle again. And the good news is once you've drawn it to two pi, then you can easily, hopefully, figure out what goes in here, because what's, what's half of two pi? Well, two pi over two is just pi, so that's this, that's halfway. And then this point right here is half of that. So pi divided by two, well, that's pi over two. And then if I start counting by 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, then this point right here must be 3 pi over 2. That's how I do these. And same over here. This is 2 pi, therefore halfway, which in this case is this one right here. That's pi. And half of that, that's pi over 2. And over here, this is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2. This must be 3 pi over 2. So those are the important points here. You have to know these. Uh, so that's really all you need. You can then draw these by hand, as many of these as you want, wherever you need them. And we're going to learn later on about transformations, how you can actually take this now and stretch it and move it and uh, stretch it vertically or horizontally. You can flip it around uh, across the X or Y axis. Now I have an awesome joke for you. I like this guy. He's like, hey girl, what's your sign? It must be pi over 2 because you are the 1. Now why is that awesome? Because remember, if you know how to graph your Y equals sine X. I just showed you this, but let's do it again. So this is sine x, which goes like this. This right here is at 2 pi. And this right here is at pi. Therefore, this right here is at pi over 2. And look, he's saying it must be pi over 2. Why is that? Because you are the 1. In other words, at sine of pi over 2, y is 1. That's a very nerdy joke, but I love it. <laughs> So let's also do tan. Now tan is a little bit different than sine and cos. So where sine and cosine look the same, they just, they're actually just shifted over. So this is like this one here just goes up and down like this, but has a start point of zero. This one here has a start point of one. But they're essentially the same graph, just one is moved over. Tangent, however, is totally different. So here, if I draw myself some axes here, so I'll draw, whoops, that wasn't a very good job at all. Let me try that again. That's better. So here I'm going to draw, now here you actually do need to draw something. So I'm going to say pi over 2, and here I'm going to say pi. And if this is 1 pi over 2, this is 2 pi over 2, so this must be 3 pi over 2. And over here it must be 4 pi over 2, which is actually 2 pi, and so on. And I'll do the same over here. Negative pi over 2, and negative pi, and therefore we have negative 3 pi over 2, and so on. If I look at this, then tangent does something a little bit special. It has what we call asymptotes, first of all. And what asymptotes are, these are lines where the, or places where the graph never actually reaches. And it has asymptotes here. So at pi over 2, and of course at negative pi over 2, because it's symmetric. And it has them again at another set of pi over 2. So that means in this case 3 pi over 2, and of course over here. Now what tangent does, it does this. It starts off here and it actually goes like this and then like this. I didn't draw it very nicely because it should pass through 0, 0 here. So I'll try to make my graph here a little bit better. So it's asymptotic. In other words, it goes really infinitely close to this but without quite reaching it. Just like this one here does the same thing again. And so on. And this one here does the same thing over here like this. So it repeats. It's a repeating function. Now it looks really weird, but this is how it goes. This is how tangent works. So you could draw as many of these as you need, but basically this is how tangent lines go. They're asymptotic to these values here. And the important thing though is this, that the period is actually just pi. In other words, if you look from here, this point, you have to go across by pi before it repeats again. In other words, the distance from, let's say, this point to this point, that's pi. Whereas over here, these original ones, sine and cosine, the period is two pi. And over here, the period is 2 pi. So that's important. That's something to make sure you know for tangent. Tangent has a different period. These ones right here also have an amplitude. We call this amplitude. That's the, you know, how much it goes up above the axis. Amplitude equals 1. Same thing here. Amplitude equals 1. Now, for tangent, it doesn't make sense to say amplitude because it's something that goes up to infinity. So we don't say it has an amplitude. But we can say it has a period. 
And finally comes a really bad joke then. This is a tangent line saying my tan lines are showing. Ha 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 ha. So uh, this is going to be important though to use. Well, not this joke here, but I suppose this joke too. This helps you to know how tangent works. But um, these graphs, knowing how to graph sine by hand and knowing how to do cos by hand really help you out. Because later on you can be looking at different transformations and you can know exactly what to do just by starting with these.